we speak against his words because we can't see them coming to pass in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And what you see is what you'll, be, you'll get. Mm -hmm. What you hear and you let come into you is what's going to be. And so as I was just thinking about that, and I was just, just, it was just very sobering. It was just very sober when worship was going on because I could feel the Lord's heart. He's grieved. And it tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We are his body, and he needs his body to get and get into motion and become who we were born again to become. We were not born of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. And I thought about it. The portals of heaven are open, and so are the portals of hell. Sandy's mother went to heaven this morning. Mm -hmm. Two o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. she left. Wow. There's going to be other people leaving. Why? Because there's just times for things. And the Lord is saying to us, Get in my word and know my word and get out of your head. Because you cannot understand his word with your head. It comes out of your heart and your spirit. And so I was just, I'm just thinking, of, I'm just thinking a lot. And I don't know, the soberness probably has hit me before this morning. But just I'm just kind of like inside... Um, looking at things and the seriousness of things and I see the church is not and because we think that we'll always be here we're coming to the end of things I don't know how much longer the church has but I keep going back to what Kenneth Hagin said when he when he had that that vision and the Lord, he said, he saw bombed out cities. New York was one. He saw other bombed out cities. And he said, he said to the Lord, what Lord, is this now? Now, he said, no, towards the end. Mm. Well, we're towards the end. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm saying, that we need to settle our hearts on God and settle our, our, our attitudes and be ready for him to use you. He's going to use those that are ready in this last day. But you have to be ready. You need to change how you think and what comes out of your mouth because the enemy is what is what did it say in the 2023 prophecy that we have not seen the depths of satan you think about the depths of satan satan and look at the the what happened in um washington dc and all the other places that are holding up uh hamas and all of this uh, it's like even israel's support is dwindling because now people are siding against you can't side against God. Amen. Cannot side against God. God is Jerusalem. God is Israel. You cannot side against God because you will find yourself in a grave. And I, I was just thinking, when is the church going to get serious about it? The things of God. When are they going to get really serious and become? I would say this, that a lot of people in the church need to ask the question, am I really saved? Because if you don't have the evidence, you are not saved. We need to be serious about the things of God. Ask that question. The Holy Spirit will tell you. Because if you're not saved, you need to get saved. Because to be saved is to be Christ-like in every area of our life. I, I just, I, I, my heart is, um, you, you, you start thinking about things. You start really looking at what matters and what doesn't matter. What has an eternal way to glory? What doesn't have an eternal way to glory? 
and realize that he said in Psalms 91 that we reside in the secret place of the Most High God and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But that is for a true believer. Those promises are for those that are true believers. And especially if we've been born again for years and years and years, sometimes we've let a lot slip, a lot go. We've let, we let it go. Why? Because we just get into life and forget that this is life. <clears throat> and it, when it says, walk around your house and pray. Pray Psalms 91 over your properties. Pray Psalms 91 over your loved ones. Pray. Just don't think it's just going to automatically be. That's not, that's, that's, not, that's not what it is. It's not, nothing's automatic. Except whatever you speak automatically will come to pass. Hallelujah. I just, I just, I'm just thinking, is the body of Christ serious? Are we really serious about his word? Are we really serious about living his word, being those epistles that are read of all men? Somebody is reading you to determine if what you have they want or not, or they look at you and think, I don't want that. So they're watching. People are watching you that you don't even know that's watching you. And they're looking you and they're saying, well, they say they're this, but I see that or that or this. They talk like this. They act like that. Look. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to show you where you're falling short at. And he will. But I just, I just, just for the church, when you think about the blood-bought, washed church of the redeemed, that's a big, big thing to think about because that's what we're supposed to be, the blood-washed church of the redeemed. And so all of these things are happening all over the earth and I, I mean, I don't listen to TV preachers. I, I, I learned early on, and this is just me, this is not for anybody else, but the Lord told me to stay in the vein that I am in with who I am with, and I don't get mixture in me. Amen. A lot of people get mixture in them, and they're mixed up because they're listening to many different doctrines. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. Because I, I need to keep things straight, in me, straight inside of me so I can minister the pure word of God to the best of my ability. Um, you can have what you say. Think about where you are right now today. Was this where you wanted to be? Is this how you wanted it to turn out? But we are all what we have spoken out of our mouth or even demonstrated in the quietness of our own homes. We are. And, and, and let me tell you something. God doesn't put on blinders. We think, well, there's nobody here but me. Oh, he sees everything, everything, everything. So if I can have what I say, then I want to speak out of my mouth what I want based in the word. Mm -hmm. And don't think that you have to do this by yourself because God's grace is there for you to complete whatever assignment you have. His grace is there to help you. His grace is there. But he... We say, okay, I trust in the Lord. And then the next thing out, but suppose this doesn't work. Uh, <coughs> that's not faith. That's foolishness and presumption. There's faith, foolishness, and presumption. It is very easy to identify 
negative limiting thoughts and beliefs. Very easy. Most people that know who they are and who they are, they're not continually confessing what they are. They just know it. They just act on it. It's a part of their life. So I, I want to say this. It is very easy to identify negative, limiting thoughts and beliefs. Number one, they bring fear. Number two, they make you feel bad. Number three, they manifest in your life as hopelessness, Expectations and poverty, <coughs> failure and defeat. So these are things that we don't want. It is very easy to identify negative, limiting thoughts and beliefs that are inside of us already. Those thoughts that we have not cast those imaginations down. <coughs> we haven't took them captive. We haven't replaced them with something positive. We, our walk with God is like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down, up and down, highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows. They bring those negative thoughts <coughs> They bring fear. But what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I can't afford this. How am I going to get that? How am I going to do this? That's negative thoughts that bring fear. They make you feel bad. And then you come to the the doors of the church and you put on your happy face. Everything is okay, I'm good. Oh yeah, I'm blessed, blessed, highly favored. <laughs> they manifest in your life as hopelessness, but very masked as joy and everything's fine. They make you feel stuck. Remember this. What is seen, what is seen is created from what is unseen. <laughs> Remember what is seen is created from what is unseen. Now, you're going to catch that today, <laughs> next week, or a couple of years from now. But you have to catch it because what is seen is created from what is unseen. Go to Genesis chapter 1. He spoke the worlds into existence. We are speaking spirits. We can speak our world into existence and have what we speak, whether it be positive or negative. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I'm going to go to verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So he's saying, I call heaven and earth to record. 
So the recording angels are recording your choice. And your choice is determined by your actions. What comes out of your mouth. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Okay, so if he set life before me and death, and I know full well I have not finished my course, then I choose life, mm -hmm. and I speak life, mm -hmm. and I act life, and I look life, and I do not let other things bring me down, even if it's a tragedy or hard. You have to realize this. That all things are not going to stay the way they are. Life changes. People change. And you change. So if I'm still looking for the golden calf, he may have got tarnished by now. <laughs> he, he, he may not even be headed my way because I've spoke so much death over my finances that he's not coming my way. See, God's word says it will not return void. It's going to produce one way or the other. How we speak determines the difference. <coughs> he says, I'm going to read 19 and 20, I think. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Oh my gosh, that frightens me. That um, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. Now that is, that's like you have a test. You have the test and, and the person that's given you the test says, by the way, here's the answer. Yes. <laughs> I'm giving you the answer to the test you're, you're, you're about to take. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. To Abraham and Isaac and Jacob to give them. So he's telling us, you're taking a test of life. And I'm telling you the answers. Choose life. And once you choose life, you set other things in motion. Once you choose it, you set everything in motion. But you can't choose life today and something happens tomorrow and you unchoose life. That's a double-minded man who's unstable in all his ways and let him think that he will receive nothing from the Lord. So if I'm going to choose life, I make life decisions every day. And I have to think about that decision. Is this decision a life decision? Or is this decision a, a, a decision made hastily because of fear? Is this a decision made, uh, well, I guess I better do this. That's not a decision. I guess I better do this if I really want to this. Mm, wrong, mm, heart wrong, wrong heart. I don't know how a lot of people think or respond, or what they've sat under in the word, in their life. But a lot of those foundations I would blow up because <laughs> they are not producing anything. I would get rid of them, why? Because they're not producing. I would not reminisce about them. I would not talk about them. I would get myself in the word of God and let the Holy Spirit of God begin to straighten my thinking out. 
Sometimes part of your foundation is right and the other part of it's wrong. And so you have mixture in you that helps you make decisions. Mixture is not the whole, it's mixture. It's mixed with a little, Christ, a little faith, a little religion, a little guessing, I hope so. Uh, it's, it's mixed with all things that will not produce for you. 